The story begins with our heroine being reborn as a five-year-old girl. She is reborn in a novel to which she wrote hate comments because of the many cliches in the story. When she sees herself in the mirror, the heroine realizes that she is Little Daisy, the witch's daughter from the novel Monster Prince. She had the same silver hair, and cloudy blue eyes. Daisy was the adopted daughter of the witch Kalia. Along with her mother, she tormented the main character. Kalia kidnapped the young prince Dionel and cursed him, causing him to change his appearance from human to monster. They fed him poison plants that allowed her to extract more magic from him. When Daisy gave the prince poison plants, he would turn into a monster, and scare the girl. The cursed prince suffered every day until he met the female protagonist. She wasn't afraid of his monster form, and healed all his wounds. Soon they fell in love and their kiss lifted the curse from Dionel. He returned to the palace and became crown prince. His first order as crown prince was obvious to everyone. He ordered to execute Kalia, and her daughter Daisy. Our heroine believes Daisy is also a victim of Kalia. After all, the witch originally adopted Daisy to learn how to extract magical energy from someone. In any case, now she's possessed Daisy's body, and she is screwed. The heroine starts pounding on the door screaming that she wants to go home. She will never leave bad comments again. Someone opened the door with force, and the little girl fell to the floor. Callie reminds Daisy that she asked her to stay quiet. The witch was absolutely gorgeous, just like in the novel, but the heroine thinks it's not the time to admire her beauty. She asks the mother to let her out. Callie was furious when the child called her mother. The witch never treated Daisy as her own daughter. The child fell to her knees, and apologized for calling her mother. Kalia then asks Daisy to call her, what she has always called her. Our heroine doesn't remember how Daisy called Kalia, but the witch is waiting for her answer, so she has to take a chance. The kid calls her ma'am, which makes the witch even angrier. The last thing our heroine thinks, she's completely screwed. The next morning. Daisy woke up in her room on the floor. Her head hurt, and she tried to remember what had happened. When she called the witch ma'am, Daisy felt a strong gust of wind, and then passed out. She can't believe that this woman would treat a small kid like that. It's too cruel. Now she remembered what Daisy called Kalia. She called her Miss Witch. Our heroine doesn't see much difference between ma'am and miss, so what's the problem? Suddenly the door opened, and the girl jumped. Kalia was dressed in a beautiful black dress. She came to make sure Daisy woke up. The little girl said hello, to Miss Witch. Kalia was glad that Daisy had finally come to her senses. In her opinion, even a child as stupid as Daisy should remember at least something. Kalia tells her that she is going to the capital, and throws her a pouch. Daisy must give these poison plants to the prince in the abandoned house. Kalia asks the child to stop fidgeting, and do as she is told. Today Kalia will meet Jelfus, but this kid has spoiled her mood. Jelfus Viscon Orsinium was Kalia's lover. He is the son of a concubine from another country, and was born with a small amount of magical energy. In Orsinium, power is determined by the amount of magical energy so Jelfus was deemed a useless heir. Such a crown prince was the perfect victim for a witch wanting power like Kalia. Nine years ago when Jelfus was lost in the forest, he suddenly met a beautiful girl. This girl's name was Kalia. She tricked him, pretended that she had met him by chance in the woods, and wanted to help him. Jelfus then told her that he was a crown prince, and fell in love with her at first sight. Kalia also fell in love with him, but they couldn't be together because she was a witch. Empire Orsinium hates witches, and hunts them down. However, Kalia believes when Jelfus becomes emperor, she will be able to enter the palace. Jelfus explains that he can't become emperor, 
because he doesn't have enough magic. Kalia tells him not to worry, she will find a way to make him emperor. All he needs to do is listen to everything she tells him. Soon the empress gave birth to the second prince, who had an incredible amount of magical energy. Dinal interfered with Kalia's plans to take over the empire, so she kidnapped him and cursed. Our heroine doesn't want to do what the evil witch tells her. So Daisy will not abuse the main character, but befriend him. Daisy looks around the room for something to feed Dianel instead of the poison plants. She finds an old bag. In the bag, she finds bread. This bread is stale, but it's better than nothing. Daisy has one more problem to solve. To find the prince, she needs to get past Cerberus. Daisy can use poison plants to scare the Cerberus away from herself. But then she can't talk to Dianel because the smell is hated by animals. Daisy quickly uses the poison, it's better than being eaten. While the little girl walks to the abandoned house, scary Cerberus watch her from the woods. She tries to ignore them, looking forward to meeting the main character. Suddenly the Cerberus start barking, and scare the child. She washed off the poison by falling into a puddle. Daisy starts screaming for help, she doesn't want to die. She thinks it's unfair, she hasn't even met the prince. For some reason, the huge Cerberus started to look like a cute puppy. While the Cerberus licks Daisy, she can't believe they just wanted to play with her. Daisy wants to repay them, so she will play with them until they are satisfied. Soon night comes, and the little girl falls asleep between the Cerberus. They guarded her peace while she slept soundly. Dianel can't understand what this kid is doing here. She's foolish enough to sleep in an abandoned forest. At that moment, a raven monster flew out of a tree, and attacked the prince. Dianel picked up a stone from the ground, and threw it at the raven. The stone pierced the bird's chest, and it fell to the ground. Dianel was upset that this forest was inhabited only by monsters, that he couldn't eat. Daisy said that His Highness is very cool. Her beautiful eyes shone like precious diamonds. At the abandoned house, Daisy apologized for giving him poisonous plants before, but she never did it willingly. The first part of the plan is to beg for forgiveness. So, Daisy begs him to give her a chance. The second part of the plan is to offer him food. Daisy believes that a person who gives food can't be considered evil, but the prince refuses her food. Daisy agrees that the bread is already stale, but he can eat it with water, so it won't be so bad. Dianel tells her to put it away and hits the bread. Daisy realizes he really is a monster. Why did he hit the bread? Daisy says she just wanted to feed him. She brought him the bread even though she was hungry too. Dianel doesn't want to take anything from her. Also, it's all her fault. The girl doesn't understand how it can be her fault, if she didn't do anything. Dianel is enveloped in a dark aura. He told her to put it away, why didn't she listen to him? Daisy remembers that in the novel, Dianel turned into a beast due to stress. Could it be because of the bread, he really hates it so much? Daisy wants to run, but can't because she's too scared. So the beast attacked the little girl. Turns out, the monster is even smaller than Daisy. It's just a baby panther. Daisy realized that she had nothing to fear, what could he do with such small canines? The girl pulls the cat away from her hand, saying it's not good to bite people. Baby panther is shocked, how such a little girl can be so strong. Daisy is relieved to realize, she has nothing to fear in the near future. 
After these thoughts, she heard some strange noises. The panthera was getting bigger, and bigger. The angrier Diana got, the bigger his monster became. <coughs> Daisy remembered that, but it seemed too late. Kalya and Daisy tormented Dianal, so he always turned into the wildest version. Now Daisy doesn't know what to do, but... She won't let some panther eat her for nothing. The bread she hit the panther with was so dry, she almost broke his canines. Then Diana lost consciousness. The abandoned house where Diana lived was always dark. But this night someone lit the fireplace, and made sure that his highness was not cold. <coughs> Diana asks what she's doing here. The girl says that she lit the fireplace, and then covered him with a blanket. The girl is sure his highness must praise her. Diana asks who she is. He asks her to stop pretending to be his friend and explain why she came here. If she continues to keep quiet, he will eat her. Daisy asks him to calm down, she just wants to help him. Then Diana asks the little girl to tell him her name. The girl's name is Daisy. She asks him to let go of her wrists, it hurts. Diana lets her go with such force that the girl falls to the floor. Daisy demands that he apologize. Diana sees no need to apologize. <coughs> then Daisy starts yelling at him, why he bites the hand that brought him bread. Diana corrects her, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Actually, he never asked for her help. <coughs> Daisy thinks he's right but he's so annoying. Still, the girl thinks he could at least thank her for her help. The boy agrees with her, but he hasn't forgotten that she tormented him in the past. Daisy is sorry, she really didn't want to do that. But if she disobeyed the witch's orders, she hurt her. Daisy doesn't want to live like that, she won't hurt anyone else to avoid her own pain. She believes it's not right to live like this. Even if she was hurting him, it didn't mean she was living a happy life herself. Original Daisy tried to earn the witch's love, but never got it. When Kalia found out that Daisy is a descendant of Lutklana, she no longer had a chance to be her real daughter. Lutklana people have a lot of magical energy, but they can't use it. That's why everyone thinks they're useless, and despises them. Kalia couldn't consider a person of the Lutklana family as her daughter. Daisy and Dianel hated each other. But in reality, they had a lot in common. Diana can't believe her, she lies to him. Daisy asks his highness to at least believe that she doesn't wish him harm. <coughs> the prince doesn't care, he will eat her if she doesn't get away right now. <coughs> the girl understood, the plan to become friends in one day didn't work. Before leaving, Daisy leaves a healing ointment for his highness. Outside, the Cerbers were waiting for the little girl. She asked them to take her home to the Tower of Fog. After that, the Cerbers dragged the child away at high speed. When Dianel was alone, he regrets having chased Daisy away. She was the daughter of his enemy, but still, this child had come just to talk to him. Dianel couldn't make fire because of the curse. So it was really nice to sleep in a warm house. The next day Daisy went to investigate the witch's library. The library was really huge, after all, Kalia was the strongest witch in the novel. With that knowledge Kalia could become a magician and avoid people's hatred. But she still chose to remain a witch. <coughs> Daisy finally found something interesting. A book about the basic knowledge of pharmacology. Even though Daisy can't use magic, she can make medicines. Daisy has already imagined how to make money with this knowledge, and even heal the prince from his curse. Meanwhile, a map fell out of the book. It seemed to be a map of the immediate area around the Tower of Fog. The Great Fairy Spring caught the girl's attention. She seemed to have an idea. Since she has the map, it's adventure time. The first thing Daisy wants to do is hug her new friends the Cerberus. Daisy asks if they are doing well, 
if it's cold for them to sleep outside. Anyway, she needs to give them names. The left one will be called Zero, this one Barrow, and the last one Russ. Daisy noticed that the Cerberus had blood on their faces, so they had already hunted. The girl makes puppy eyes, and asks them to get her and the prince some meat. Zero and Russ go to do the child's pleas. Barrow will stay with her for protection and transportation. Putting on her red cape, Daisy sets off on her first adventure. To be more precise, she was driven by Barrow, and she just needs not to fall down. Barrow suddenly stopped, interrupting his writer's thoughts. To Daisy's surprise she found a camp in the abandoned forest. The camp was quiet, so most likely the owners were not around. The child began to explore the place, and found a bottle, and a plate. It's unbelievable. At the same time Barrow found the bag. Daisy found a real treasure in the bag. The girl praises the doggy for a good job, good boy. She decides to give the folding knife to the prince, he will need it more. Before going back to the tower, Daisy wants to stop at the waterfall and get some clean water. Honestly, Daisy was sure Dionel would be happy to see her, but that was not the case. He still shouted at her to get out of here, which upset the girl. Daisy asks his highness to calm down and not turn into a beast at the sight of her. While Dionel was muttering something Daisy noticed her healing ointment on the floor. The little girl was annoyed that his highness didn't use the ointment she had given him yesterday. Dionel can't understand what's going on. This little kid is telling him off. Picking up the medicine from the floor Daisy demanded that his highness give her a hand. Using a secret technique of smearing ointment on the wound, our heroine confuses the prince. Dionel already wants to take the hand, but Daisy shows that the wound has already disappeared. The secret technique worked, and of course the witch's ointment. Daisy confesses that she stole the ointment from Kalia. The witch doesn't care about her daughter's wounds. Dionel was surprised to hear this, so her situation is no different from his. No way, the prince finally heard what she said. In any case, Dionel doesn't want to use that witch's ointment. Daisy explains that he's thinking wrong. If they use that expensive ointment, they will only make the witch angrier. Kalia hates them, so this is the best way to get revenge. Dionel agrees, he will use a lot of this stuff. Daisy is sure this is the first time the prince has smiled at her. Then, Daisy dragged into the house an antelope that was caught by the Cerbers. They're having a lot of meat for lunch today. Dionel seemed to like her idea, and helped her drag the antelope. Daisy is sure that he will soon realize that she is a good person. Next the little girl gives the prince a bottle of water. She got this clear water from the waterfall. From now on she will bring him meat and clean water. She will also make a fire so his highness won't be scared. Daisy can't ask him to trust her, he just needs to see what she does. The boy can't understand why this child is doing this. He asks if she knows how to butcher an antelope. No, Daisy doesn't know. Dionel thought so. Anyway, he can handle it on his own. Daisy's shocked, he's really going to do it here. The boy doesn't understand what the problem is, or she planned to eat it uncut. If she is so scared, Dionel suggests she go play with the doggies. Daisy doesn't like that the prince thinks she's a little kid. Oh, right, she forgot to give him the knife. Daisy turns around saying she forgot to give him something else. Dionel tells her to shut up, she's too loud. The prince starts turning into a beast because of her screaming. Daisy realized this, and covered her mouth with hands. She apologizes, she really didn't want to scream like that. Dionel then asks her for a favor. She should sit quiet. Daisy agrees, but then notices his tail.
The little girl finds the tail so soft. She couldn't help but play with it. Diana would like to know what she's doing. Daisy was caught red-handed. She begins to apologize. She doesn't know why she did it. Diana tells her to calm down, everything is alright. If she wanted to give him something, she can put it on the floor and wait outside. Daisy is very happy, she seems to have become friends with the main character. Toward nightfall, the children started grilling meat kebabs. While they were waiting, Diana was curious about how she made the fire. When Daisy comes to her senses, she asks if he asked her about the fire. Cerberus can breathe fire. Russ and it's the weakest fire, so he helps her make up the fireplace. Diana thinks she's pretty clever. Daisy feels sorry for him. With such a talent for magic, Diana can't even make fire because of the curse. Diana suddenly asks why Daisy is calling him His Highness. In his situation, Diana doesn't feel like a prince at all. Daisy thinks that no matter whether he is a beast or a human, he is still a prince. Maybe it sounded too deep for a five-year-old, but it was cool. Diana sees no point in continuing this conversation with a stupid kid. <laughs> While Diana is putting more wood on the fire, Daisy asks him to take his words back. The prince started to break the boards with such ease, that her heroine forgot what he said a moment ago. Daisy remembered that Diana is only nine years old, but he is quite strong, and even knows how to cut up an antelope. Could someone have taught him that? <coughs> Diana gave Daisy a fried kebab, and she was very happy to taste it. Diana made a suggestion while she was eating. She brought him the meat because she wanted to eat it herself. <coughs> that sounds kind of selfish, Daisy doesn't like it. <coughs> Daisy thought it would be sad for him to eat alone. After all, it's much more enjoyable to eat with a pretty girl. What? In short, it's more fun to eat together, so she stayed with him. Diana says he'd love to eat alone, but okay. Daisy couldn't help but notice that the prince smiled more often. The prince asks her to stop smiling so stupidly, and continue eating meat. <coughs> that was quite rude. So, Daisy took some kebabs to give to the Cerberus. Before leaving, the girl advised Diana not to cook the meat for too long and to eat it before it got tough. Then Daisy ran to give the meat to her doggies before it got cold. Diana can't understand what's wrong with this girl. After an hour, the children ate all the meat and rested. Diana did not share Daisy's joy and became gloomy again. Our heroine is annoyed by his behavior, but since she's an adult, she's willing to wait until the main character develops sympathy for her. Suddenly Daisy remembered something and got up. She has to leave now, but tomorrow she'll bring more ointment for Diana. The prince says it's not necessary. He was obviously upset that Daisy was leaving. <coughs> Daisy jokes that she can stay here, if he asks her nicely. The prince asks her to stop being silly and finally leave. Daisy is offended by his rudeness, but seems to be used to it. In any case, Daisy promises to come to him tomorrow. Diana didn't even look at her. From outside, Daisy said she would visit him tomorrow. That's her promise. At that time, Daisy didn't know she couldn't keep her promise. In the morning, Daisy came back to the Tower of Fog. She had a nice meal with the prince, took a ride on the Cerberus, and Callie still wasn't home. It was our heroine's happiest day in Daisy's body. A commanding voice asks Daisy where she's been. The woman asked where Daisy got such a wonderful outfit. Callie stood on the doorstep of the tower in a gorgeous red dress. She assumed that Daisy had used her old dress to make such a lovely cape. Daisy explained stammeringly that she had found the clothes on the floor, and thought Callie had thrown it away. Callie doesn't care about her outfit, she wants to know where Daisy has been. Guys. This is the end of part 1. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to my new channel. See you soon.